Transitions is but a tiny piece, really a tiny piece of all that work that we're doing. You know, the measure of a country, the measure of a province, the measure of any community, is how it treats its most vulnerable citizens. And our youth are simultaneously our most vulnerable young citizens and our greatest promise for the future. So I want to thank you for all the work that you do every single day. And I hope that in our small way that our team is going to help you make your work better, more successful, because transition is a tool, it's a resource. Our job is to help you be successful, so I want to thank you for that. Now I'm supposed to talk about what transition did, but this being the modern era, I have been demoted from the speaker's podium in favor of an animated video. <laughs> so I'm going to ask Mitch to come up and do whatever he does, and we'll make that animated video happen. And the animated video will tell you about transition. Transitions is brought to you by teenmentalhealth.org. Designed and developed by We As Them Incorporated. Woohoo! That's the last time I have to hear that bell. Finally graduated from school. But which college or university do I go to? They accepted me here. They've got that program I really like. I got a scholarship here. University, here I come. Wow, I'm finally here. What could be better? Living on my own? Work? Enjoy life? Oh yeah, we'll try to study at some point too. Roommates? No way. I got friends I bunk with. Get a place together. Woohoo! Yeah. Got a student loan, so I'm good for money. Work. And I've got a high school suit at too. I'm good. My roommates suck. They don't do anything around here. My girlfriend? Yeah, she left me too. What do you mean I have no money left? This was supposed to be easy. I don't even want to get out of bed anymore. Why am I depressed all the time? This this doesn't seem normal. It can't be, can it? What's going on? I'm drinking so much. Am I drinking too much? Nah, nah, couldn't be. What's with all this work anyways? I thought these courses were gonna be easy. How do they do it? I can't even keep up. What is this? Transitions? Hmm, it looks interesting. Time management, stress management, relationships, addictions, mental illnesses. There's an app. And an ebook? Wow. Interesting. It's got a lot of information. With other websites, videos. Oh, this is cool. The links are right in it. Interesting. There's a lot of information in this app. I think I could also take this assessment. I can do that. What? I can call 911 and kids help from for more help? That's cool. In the ebook, I could even highlight or even bookmark some pages. Highlighting? Bookmarking? And an ebook? Seriously? I'll even send them to my friends. That's great. Wow. Things have changed since I first joined. This is cool. This is neat. Woohoo! Got a new job and a girlfriend. And a handle on my courses. Can you believe seeing a doctor and getting the help that I actually need? Transition successfully. Get a copy of Transitions or download the app or the ebook at teenmentalhealth.org. Transitions is brought to you by teenmentalhealth.org. Designed and developed by We As Them Incorporated. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to uh, to be here today to uh, be a part of this uh, wonderful uh, initiative. 
Uh, youth making transitions are uh, facing very unique challenges, whether it's from uh, moving out of the home, moving back in the home, moving out of the home, back and forth sometimes, uh, to uh, moving to university settings and so forth. Uh, it poses uh, a huge challenge. And uh, there's all of the things with regard to money, relationships, uh, sexuality, and all of those sorts of things that they have to face. Sad reality is that many don't make it, and we lose far too many of our youngest and our brightest youth to suicide. And uh, it's wonderful to be a part of something that is, I think, really going to impact that outcome, which is a huge achievement. Uh, transitions uh, being a resource in the uh, medium that you now are able to uh, have come to your familiar with is a huge advantage. And uh, it helps educators uh, as well as the youth themselves. So speaking to where they live is really uh, the thing to do and the place to be. So this is, uh, as I mentioned, a really exciting uh, opportunity and one that can really make a difference to you, to the lives of you. As a youth myself, I bounced around far too many foster homes and uh, I really wish that there had been something like this uh, when, when I was younger. But of course, that would make Stan a lot older than me. And uh, since uh, that's not the case, obviously, uh, then I have to settle for uh, being a part partnering. And as uh, part of the Mental Health Commission of Canada, showing support in every way that we can to Stan and the work that, uh, that he is doing. Uh, he has uh, been one of the largest contributors to youth and mental youth mental health in this country. And I'm delighted and privileged uh, to be a part of it. Stan, thank you so very much and congratulations. Dr. Kutcher and Stan, as he's known very affectionately in the educational community. Mr. Hamilton, do you know the transition teams, ladies and gentlemen? It's a pleasure for me to be here with you today for the National Launch of a New Resource to help our students start out on the right path for their post secondary careers and support their mental health during what can be a very challenging transition. The journey to post-secondary education is an exciting time for students and their families, but it's often a time of uncertainty. It can be filled with anxiety and stress, which can make it difficult to see and enjoy all of the wonderful things about starting a new stage in life. Like uh, our animated video and like our previous speaker, I've got a story to tell. I came to the Halifax Regional School Board as superintendent in July 2002, and as part of my entry plan, what I did was launch um, some consultations right across the HR community with educators, parents, students, support staff. And there's one young woman that's etched in my memory that I will never forget. And her name is Kelly. We're down to Sheet Harbor, and there was a small group of high school, junior high students, and we were talking about what they liked about school, what their hopes, their dreams, their ambitions were, what we could do to improve education for them. And Kelly sat back and her arms were folded. She was engaged in the conversation. Then she looked at me and she said, Stolson, we can go away, and we do. But we always come back when Christmas is a failure. She wasn't a failure academically. 
Tony was a bright, capable, competent student. She was in grade 11 when I was speaking to her. And here was a young woman who was so fearful about leaving home, about leaving Sheet Harbor, coming away to a post-secondary experience that she was going to fail by Christmas time. And she's haunted me all the days, and I keep wondering, what can we do to support our Catholics so they can be successful, be confident, and experience the wonderful opportunities that are available for our students here in Nova Scotia or anywhere that they want to go in the world. And so that's why transition is so important to assist our youth on the road to independence. This guide, the first of its kind in Canada, is an excellent resource for students. And I'm delighted to see that the resource provides information on important topics, including stress, financial management, tips on moving away from home. That can be a very scary experience. Sexuality and mental health and where to find support. It will also provide students with practical information on strengthening and building relationships, such as making friends, dealing with roommates, when well, we've all been to issues with that at one time in our life, haven't we? And appreciating diversity. This information will make the transition for students smoother, help answer their many questions, and help relieve anxiety around what to expect. But the guide is not only for students. It's also a useful resource for guidance counselors, parents, and service providers who work with students entering their first year of post-secondary education. We are all invested in supporting the well-being of our learners in Nova Scotia. The Department of Education and Early Childhood Development is pleased to partner with our friend Stan to offer many supports to our youth. And this includes a summer conference for educators called the Academy of Mental Health, improving grade nine mental health curriculum, in offering educators go-to training, which helps identify mental health issues and concerns in the post-secondary setting. All of these tools are designed to create a safe and supportive environment in Nova Scotia schools. And Transitions is a perfect fit with this goal and adds another resource to the continuum of support Nova Scotians receive throughout their lives. It is another positive step to increase mental health knowledge and help students access the resources they need. So I want to extend my congratulations to Sam and the entire team that contributed to this project. Thank you. Students across the country can use this guide to ensure that they have the best transition to post-secondary education possible. They can focus on the excitement, fun, and many possibilities open to them, knowing they are well supported. Thank you for this wonderful investment for our students. Good morning, everybody. This is a truly wonderful occasion, and Stan, I want to congratulate you on the launch of this resource. Uh, I am firmly convinced that this resource is going to change and improve the experience of first year students across Canada in both universities and colleges. Uh, I've been working with students uh, who went to university uh, almost all of my adult career. And uh, we all know, you know, that the, the, the research that's out there about sort of transitions of life and the stress they create and you know, you know, you change your home, right? Find some home, uh, lose a partner, uh, having a child, right? These these big moments. When you think about the experience of first year students, uh, they come to post secondary education as a teenager. Having lived in often, you know, the very protective and closed environment of their family all their lives. And what happens to them in the first six weeks, the first term, the first year, is an explosion 
an absolute explosion of freedoms they've never had before, of responsibilities they've never had before, of opportunities they've never had before, and perhaps the most challenging of all, of expectations that have never been on that before. And they carry that in with them as they come to university. And there's a huge body of work, of research work, that tells us that what happens in the first six weeks of post-secondary school is life-changing. And it can be life-changing for the good or the bad. And what happens in that first year is again life-changing. Students are most of the focus of what I do as Vice President of Student Services is trying to create an environment over and over in every way that helps students succeed in that first year. Because if they get through the first year, they usually get through to their degree at the end and walk across our convocation stage. It's a huge, huge transition. Students come to us as teenagers. But what walks across the stage at convocation four or five years later is an adult. And that transition is one of the most powerful transitions in any individual's life. And what we have here today, what we're celebrating, is the launch of a resource that is going to make a difference for many people in terms of making that transition of this four or five years an extraordinarily successful one. You know, Stan's been working on this project for the, the eight years that I've known him since I've come here. And I've watched this uh, transitions product evolve into a very, very powerful tool. And one written in a way that is in no way condescending to the young adults, the young, young, young people in the university, in a way that is helpful, in a way as well that recognizes uh, their world. So, besides a print copy, we have the e-book copy, and we have for those, uh, you know, teen uh, mental health org, the students can actually access it for free. That's an extraordinary uh, assistance for them. Our goal is to connect the students with this product. But this product recognizes one of the key components of young people's lives, and that is that as they experience that explosion in their lives of opportunity and expectation and freedom and responsibility, they don't actually naturally turn to us for help when they run into problems. They turn first to their friends. And one of the most powerful things for those of you who have spent a, a lot of time on this book, yeah, is how often the book addresses not only how can I help myself, but what can I do to help my new friend? That's incredibly powerful because developing a student culture of helping your new friends and being there for them and being the one to notice being the one to notice that someone is sad, being the one to notice that someone simply isn't around anymore, and going and saying to a resident assistant, you know, or a staff member, or another friend, you know, where's John? Where's Susan? We haven't seen them, let's act. Being the one to notice that a friend is maybe not making the wisest choices in terms of how they socialize, in terms of the decisions they make when they are socializing, the wisest choices in terms of what they choose in the dining hall to be. All of these factors uh, are incredibly important and they impact whether a student is going to run into such a sense of overwhelming uh, inability to cope 
that they feel like a failure in December, or whether in fact they can work their way through that with the help of their friends, the help of their family, and the help of the university that they're at. This book is going to make a difference. I see it as a resource, not just for the young people in our universities, but a resource for the professionals who are here to help those people. And a very powerful resource for parents. Because very often, parents are the next line of defense for our young people in this day of total interconnectivity. But they don't necessarily understand that the world and the university world and the world out there that their son or daughter has gone into is not the same one they attended in 1975 or 1980. Uh, you know, or for those of us who are approaching grandparent or in that point, uh, 1965, 1960. But university life is very different now. The pressures on students are much, much wider. And ultimately, there's another huge, huge transition for them, and that's into the workforce. And that is a transition that, in my generation, we didn't worry about so much. We always knew. I remember saying to my friends in the English Lit program, it, well, the job thing didn't matter because I could always get a job in the bank. Right? So nothing better to have done. I could get a job with a bank. There's no one who bank managers. <laughs> <laughs> but in fact, the hundreds of thousands of jobs that I knew would be there for me are all gone. They're called ATMs now. Okay? And over and over, one of the things that our university students discover is that every step, the steps are actually really harder for them now. And so they come with you know, all that expectation, all that hope. It's our job to realize that for them and position them for a successful future. All of us do it in our various capacities. But when you look at a project like this that's been over a decade in the making and that draws on the huge expertise of Stan and his research team, that's a way to make an incredibly powerful difference and help for not just Dalhousie students, but for the students that are entering university college across the country. And we're going to be very active partners in promoting this book and, and this product uh, for the team because we have great faith in it. Before I, I've gone on too long, but I would like to uh, acknowledge a couple of people from our student services team in the room. Um, Victor Day, our director of counseling here, and we're very proud to have a, a, a really profound counseling department that does deep work with students here. We have 10 professionals uh, in that center, as well as another 15, 16 people in the community who assist us uh, with personal counseling for our students. Derek Enslow, who is our health care educator. <laughs> And there I works with 10 paid health care educators and a group of 30 to 40 volunteers from our nursing classes to do extensive health education promotion. Uh, a powerful presence, presence in our residences uh, across campus. And also Barry Turpin, who is our new executive director of student wellness, uh, was with us today. I think, unfortunately, uh, because of the appointments, Glenn Andrea, our director of health services, was not able to come. So all of those people work with large teams. Uh, to uh, support our students, and they are all going to be working with this product, thanks in part to the Stay Connected project uh, as well, and it, it will make a big difference. So thank you very much. I'm really pleased to be part of this today. for me as well to participate at this launch today uh, to have the opportunity to describe our state connected mental health project and to um, uh, announce a particular partnership uh, uh, with the transitions uh, initiative and our particular uh, state connected mental health project um, as we've heard um, 
the terrain of the teen years truly is the, the crucible in which uh, most mental illnesses have their, have their onset. Yet many teens don't receive the mental health and addictions uh, services that they require. And even when they are provided appropriate uh, uh, care, that care is often disrupted as people transition into adulthood. And more often than not, youth uh, don't transition from pediatric care settings to our adult-based mental health and addiction services at age 19. And sometimes there are developmental issues that may get in the way and may lead someone to choose not to continue in care. But I hate to say it, but more often than not, um, sometimes the lack of collaborative processes and integration between our youth and adult treatment settings is more likely one of the critical ingredients that um, um, prevent a seamless transition of, of care. And unfortunately, the burden of illness for youth and for their families after they age out of pediatric care before they resume adult-based care truly is huge and, uh, and unacceptable. The State Connected Mental Health Project attempts to address some of these uh, challenges by creating pathways for youth and their families to see them stay connected to the mental health and addictions care that, that they require. The project is a five-year initiative uh, involving the IWK and Capital Health uh, Mental Health and Addictions programs. And briefly, the, the project involves a number of what we like to think will be culture-shifting uh, components and practices to support the uh, provision of true collaborative, what we call hand-over-hand -hand care between our settings that really will set the stage for youth and their families to stay involved in care during this critical and vulnerable age of, of transition. These components include a skills-based readiness program where youth will be taught the strategies of self-management when it comes to their symptoms and, and experiences of treatment, a family mentorship program which uh, will support families while their teen is transitioning um, from youth to adult care. The creation of a service landscape map, which should help IWK clinicians better um, identify the services that might be available for the youth that they're seeing and transitioning, and the pathways between those services so that people don't end up falling off the path somewhere and also a, uh, uh, a training initiative for capital mental health addictions uh, clinicians to, sort of addictions clinicians, to, to enhance their skills and their familiarity and their sense of confidence in working with teens and, and young adults. And it really is our strong belief that these components uh, together are really essential to shift how we work with young people and their families and, and how we support them to stay in the care that they require as they transition and move into adulthood. Of course, I need to acknowledge that the State Connected Mental Health Project was uh, funded through the QE2 Foundation by a very generous gift from Elizabeth and Fred Fountain uh, that was in memory of, of their son, Alex. And not only were the families willing to, to support this program, but they really encouraged us to, to try to expand the project a little further to provide some outreach to our university communities. Uh, uh, and as we've heard, all of those significant life transitions that occur when young adults, young people, attend university for the first time truly are, are, uh, are life-changing and, and very significant. And we know that student mental health challenges impact academic performance and they impact university careers. But as we often have come to appreciate, our counseling and health services at our local universities all identify that they're not necessarily resourced uh, to address the full mental health needs of their student populations. And, and all are challenged to uh, uh, provide uh, fuller care and to identify transitions and appropriate collaborative care to our hospital-based services when, when that's warranted. 
So with additional support from, from the mountains, we've been able to engage with the Cousy, Mount St. Vincent, Kings and St. Mary's Universities to identify a variety of initiatives uh, that will see a closer collaboration between our hospital based mental health and addiction services and the health and counseling services uh, on universities. So these initiatives include things like uh, educational opportunities for faculty and staff to identify and respond to students in distress, the creation of a standing university uh, and hospital liaison mental health and addictions committee to enhance some of the collaborative practices uh, between our university health and hospital based services and a process to consider involving peers who have recovered from their own mental health and addictions uh, struggles and challenges who can support other students who may need to engage in treatment and pathways towards uh, improving uh, their circumstances and moving towards recovery. And we're also partnering with the Association of Atlantic Universities uh, on a number of, uh, of broader assistance-wide initiatives that should support uh, student mental health and the well-being of our university community. Now one very specific initiative that um, our project has been able to accomplish, we've already been able to, to do this uh, uh, this past month, uh, has been to work with the universities to deliver a free app of the transition book to every incoming first year university student at all of our partner universities. That's over 6,000 new students and young people who were sent and the various folks who are involved in that end of how you um, distribute things electronically to all of their new students, they were so um, happy to engage and supportive in identifying the, the easiest way, way to do this. It was really a, a, it became a very simple task, which was, was lovely to see. And we're also providing hard copies of the book to each of those universities um, that will be available through counseling services, through health services, at student union um, offices, at residences, or any other relevant place where, uh, where the resource can benefit um, the students. Um, and the resource that we've already heard will benefit um, healthcare providers, counselors, advisors, residents, assistants, and all of those folks who when tooled with more um, information and uh, education about addressing some mental health issues and supporting their students in the ways that they need, no doubt will continue to, to make a difference. Um, I am very, very pleased to, to participate in this, uh, this launch today and to support this, this wonderful resource. Over on the table here, we see just a small number of the, uh, uh, the hard copy editions of, uh, of Transitions that we will be circulating through uh, uh, our partner universities in the next couple of weeks. I had a message I should tell you just the other day to say where would they like me to, to deliver uh, the 3,000 copies we ordered. And I said, well, you can just bring them to, to my office. I'm on the sixth floor of the Lane Building. And they, they got back to me and said, well, but are you aware that it's five pallets with 61 boxes? <laughs> So I think for the next couple of weeks, most of them will be transitioning into the back of my car. <laughs> and all of our local universities and find all the best places to, uh, uh, to uh, deposit them. So thank you very much to the uh, team who has pulled together today this wonderful resource and for this uh, wonderful event in which we can share what we're doing. A new grandmother, so that makes me feel old, I guess. <laughs> a former teacher, and as a member of the Senate Committee on Social Care, Science and Technology, that worked on the study out of the shadows that lasts to study mental health, mental illness, and addictions. I get it. I get the importance of a program like Transitions. Our, our Senate Committee, under the chairmanship of Mike Kirby, had just finished a study on 
the healthcare system of Canada. When we finished, we, just, we found out that there were some projects that really needed a standalone report. We thought that women's health needed further study, Aboriginal health needed further study, and mental health and mental illness needed further study. So Mike brought the idea forward at the community to suggest what, what, what should we study, what should we work on next. And he went around the room of all the senators on the committee, all 12 of us. Every senator on the committee had a family member or a very close personal friend who had poor mental health. Mike's sister had bipolar, my husband's sister has schizophrenia, and so it went on around the table. And it was unanimous, unanimous that we study mental health and mental illness. Of all the work that I've done in the Senate, and I was appointed to the Senate in 2000, of all the work that I've done in the Senate, the study on mental health and mental illness had the biggest impact on me. And still, years later, I think it's seven or eight years later, I will never forget the stories that we heard from people. I remember going to St. John's, Newfoundland, and I was a young girl in her 20s. She was fluently bilingual, she had a master's degree, she had worked for the government of Canada. She was depressed, she had clinical depression. And she sat in front of us and she told us her story. She had moved back to Newfoundland. Uh, because she wasn't able to work at that point, and hopefully she's back to work, but at the time she wasn't able to work. And she told us her story, and she started to cry. And she said, I wish that I had breast cancer, because then at least I wouldn't have lost my family and my friends. And I can remember sitting there, dabbing my eyes, thinking, I'm not sure that senators are supposed to cry. But it was just such a personal, heart-wrenching story. And I remember the mother from Prince Edward Island who talked about her son who started at Mount A the same year that my daughter had studied. So when it sort of touches your, your children's age group, you really are impacted by it. And they were going over to the homecoming football team because their, their son had gone to Mount A and he was going to play football for the Mount A team. Well, they got to the homecoming game and they couldn't find him. And they found him under the bleachers at the game. And he was in distress. And they had to take him back home because he was suffering from mental illness. We heard stories like that from across the country, from young people, from people of all ages. And they're stories that stay with you forever. So when you hear the work being done by people like Stan Kutcher here in Nova Scotia, it really has a huge impact on you. Uh, the transition program will provide a bridge that will be relevant to students who are graduating from high school, and it will help them to prepare for a new life. You heard earlier about the transition that, that students are making. They're needing the safety of their friends, some of their friends, school friends they've been with since grade primary, and whether they're staying in Metro Halifax or whether they're moving from another location in the province or in the country or, or other countries. In fact, it's a major, major transition for them. And it's a challenge because they are moving from a comfort level that they've had to something brand new. And transitions, I was very pleased to hear, will be providing support not just for the first year, but as the students move through university. And it was interesting watching the video this morning and, uh, and recalling the stories that my daughter, my daughters would tell us when they would come home from university. And one of the things that I do remember is when they would open the refrigerator door and say, oh my gosh, there's so much food here. And, and because their, their fridges at university had milk and bread, and I'm not quite sure what else, but we used to send them to care packages whenever they went back. Um, in fact, my daughter, who was at St. Vex, said that her, her roommates made fun of her because she always came back with all these frozen packages of food because you're always a mother and always a parent. So today is a celebration for each and every one of us, and I, I'd like to thank Dr. Stan Kutcher for the invitation to be here today and for the extraordinary work 
that he has done in a whole field of mental health and mental illness for young people. And uh, Stan worked as an advisor behind the scenes, so you won't see his name a lot in our document, but he was certainly an advisor for the work that we did on uh, uh, mental health and mental illness for young people for our committee, and, and thank you very much for that work, Stan. Uh, you have done an extraordinary job um, for, for the children and for the youth of our province and for our country. And I'm very pleased that you and your family have chosen to make Nova Scotia your home. Thanks also to each and every one of you for being here today. Your support, your understanding of the whole issue and the importance of good mental health for all Canadians, but especially for our young people, is invaluable. I thank you because together, with the leaders that you have heard from this morning and people like Dr. Kutcher, we can make a difference in the lives of our young people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us for our national launch of transitions. Um, we're really pleased to have you all here to celebrate with us and uh, please stay stay around and just network and have some coffee. Don't say you have touch the coffee. Please just enjoy that. Thank you so much.